Hello and welcome to another episode here on my channel. My name is Kevin Small and today we are watching the Skull and Bones ship combat customization and progression gameplay. If you have missed it, Ubisoft has re-announced Skull and Bones and it's not the game a lot of people expected. Uh, I have watched the announcement live uh, with my community yesterday and we had a nice talk about it. Uh, we basically came to a conclusion to look more at it from a Sid Meier's Pirates perspective at the game instead of Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Now I know this is, I know that some people are not okay with that and they had a very distinct idea about what this game is and I totally respect that, I totally understand that. But I want to watch the movie to see, uh, the movie, <laughs> the video, <laughs> it's not a movie, it's not that long, it's only eight minutes long, Mo. Um, but I want to watch the video which is going a little bit more into the progression and how you can actually customize the most important thing in the game and no that's not your pirate that's a ship so let's have a deep dive into it and let's see what they actually have to offer shall we okay we have seen this yesterday i think it's like this hey if you see a green arrow next to the number it means your weapons are very effective against this type of armor in this case it's the mortars just revealed new gameplay and is bringing you all that good pirate action on the indian ocean when it launches on november 8th but we know why you're here you want to know more about your ships and blowing stuff up yes well to learn more about your fleet and combat so you can blow stuff up we spoke to senior game director ryan barnard all right, let's start yes. at the beginning. So can you tell me a bit about the Dow, the first ship that players will captain in Skull and Bones? Sure, so uh, as you mentioned, the Dow is our smallest ship. It's the, it's the first ship that you get when you start the game as you're rescued by what will eventually become your crew. Uh, it's what we call kind of the hunter-gatherer ship where you learn how you how to gather resources and, and hunt some of the wildlife to basically I think we have a term for those type of ships and better ships in German and it would be a nutshell right that's a nutshell ship because it has the size of a nutshell and it looks like a nutshell so different weapons and different armors in the early hours, will players have the tools to start fights with other ships, or is it more of a lay low until you can have a bigger boat situation? If you choose to join a PvEP server, meaning PvP is enabled, uh, you oh, can interesting. engage uh, with combat with other players at any time. Okay, quick, quick stop here. This is something I have noticed yesterday, and this is the first time they're actually, I think, confirming it, that they are multiple servers. So this is more like an... MMO situation because when you were looking at Sea of Thieves, Sea of Thieves has a live server slash shared world. There is no choose your PvE server, choose your PvP server. You go into Sea of Thieves and everything is the same thing. And it seems like in this one, there are actually servers you can choose from, which is fascinating to see. And yeah, let's let's hope they're actually talking a little bit more about it because I'm very interested into the PVP and I want to know how the server situation works exactly. Even on your DAO, having little uh, spear fights is actually kind of fun sometimes. You'll be upgrading your ships pretty quickly in the game to get something larger where you can start adding cannons, some more okay. firepower, and then you might want to uh, start taking on you know other players if you wish. It's a little bit easier to, to sync them. And I would definitely have two servers, the PVE server, for merchandising and PvP servers for more action-oriented gameplay. An array of different ships for different activities. At launch, we will act, we have twelve playable ships, which we call the okay. captain's fleet that we want the players to eventually acquire, unlock, and twelve. And we definitely are more in the second camp of that question, where we want the ships to have uh, things that they're best at. We call them kind of tools. I think that makes sense. I'm actually surprised that, that we have that many ships right from the get-go because 12 is quite a number for ships. Like, keep in mind, we are not talking about classes. We are not talking about like special weapons or anything. We are literally just talking about ships and having 12 of them. Like we have the Dow, we have the Brigade, uh, we have the, oh God, what was the other one they showed yesterday? 
Uh, we, we already saw three of them, so that still means there are nine out there we haven't seen yet. And I'm kind of curious to see how the difference is. Uh, for the players. So it's not necessarily about upgrading to a certain ship and then that's all you, you know, use for the rest of the game. You know, I'm sure players will uh, get an affinity for the certain types of play styles and ships that they like the most. So they're all different play styles, be a okay? Right tool for the job and maybe another ship that they want to craft and customize out in their loadout uh, for taking on certain types of uh, activities and, and, and certain type of pirating. Quick note, I have to mention it. I know people are like, stop pausing all the time. I have to. This is an in-depth thingy, so yeah. I will pause quite often. Uh, sorry for that. But you can watch the whole thing without me bubbling over it and without pausing it if you like. It's on the Ubisoft channel, so go there. Um, but you know, every time he says like, yeah, you can craft this, you can do this. In the back of my head, there is this small little voice whis whispering to me and saying, you can also buy it in the Ubisoft store, so you don't have to craft it. Every single time when he talked about like, yeah, you can craft the ships. Immediately my mind was like, or oh, you can also buy it in the Ubisoft store. In the game. If you were given a contract or a job from another pirate to move a large quantity of you know, stolen goods or oh, you can or dangerous buy the materials to craft it. Yeah, of course. Of course, of that's like better. In the game, Thank you. You're definitely going to want to use a cargo ship to be able to accomplish that. So Thanks, Chad. You can use anything for most activities in the game, but there will always be the best choice for what you're trying to accomplish. Okay. Brigadine you know, Brick. Our pirate game, our open world pirate game with Skull and Bones is naval combat and we definitely wanted to be best in class for this type of game which, which is you know ships on the sea so our combat is very fast paced and we also have depth added into the combat so the types of weapons you choose versus your enemies will be important uh as you're in combat your crew actually kind of works into this i hate to say it fervor, which we call but they will probably be You'll destroyed be by cookie cutter builds attacks that could turn into a boarding attack and it's the only way you can actually get all the loot and make sure that nothing sinks to the bottom when you're fighting what are the major elements you need to consider for example loadout scouting positioning aiming etc all of our weapons and armors are classified into an element so it's based okay, let me go on, you know, back here a second. So this is the rocket launcher, number three, because of course they are upgrade levels. Um, this is medium, probably medium slot. Yeah, medium equipable slot. So those are the slots on the ships where you can actually put that thing. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of firepower. It doesn't have a lot of range, but it can shoot very quickly and it uses rockets. It's a burst explosive. Uh, this is the weight, like as you can see here, your ship has a maximum weight of 25,600, right? So you have to be a little bit careful what you were actually, um, what you actually like putting on your ship because maximum loadout is important. I would love the details on this. <laughs> Click the details button. Give me the details. Um, locate in Ganja. I don't know what that means. Located in Ganja, the ship, or is this like a special spot where you have to go to get this? To an element, so it's based on you know. Of course, we want to be grounded in reality of this 17th century kind of dawn of piracy. So things will be blunt, or maybe they will. Cause yeah, don't get me wrong. Your flamethrower is definitely not doing that. Cause tearing of the sails, or they could cause flooding. Now, based on the target that you're taking on, they'll have some. So you can you can change the armor of your ship and then you see the damage effectiveness. Like this one is good against explosions and shrapnel, I assume. But it's bad against more explosion. I, I think this is actually effective against torpedoes. Yes, I said torpedoes. 
rooted in reality of the 18th century. Who doesn't know the pirate torpedoes? Yes, they have torpedoes in the game. Um, but it's not effective against fire. Interesting. Type of armor. It could be just wood. It might be stone. It might be clay, which we call terracotta in the in the armor uh, section. And based on your loadout, you will have either a good effect. You know, you'll have the bonus damage to that uh, enemy type, or you might be neutral to that enemy type, or you might actually be doing less damage. Now, you're never completely inefficient. You can always take on any okay. target with any type of loadout. That would be so be interesting for PvP. Effective loadouts, uh, depending on what you're facing. Weirdly also, enough, are a way that you can actually slow the more I'm seeing this game, the more I'm actually a, more interested in the PvP part. Oh, there are the torpedoes to for everyone out. who was like, also, torpedoes? Also, all of our yes. enemy ships have something we call weak points. So depending on the class of the enemy ship, you'll see these large kind of outlined red targets. And if you take those out, you'll do a high amount of damage. You might start mm. the ship burning. They'll have a different effect. It might change their behavior, uh, but it'll definitely do a lot of damage. Let's talk about when combat doesn't go your way. So is it possible to flee from combat <laughs> and escape an enemy or reach a safe haven? Yes. So might be more difficult to escape a player, for instance, um, who's chasing you, but you definitely can. I wonder if a fast ship will be like the best choice in PvP, game, because you can escape, you will. So you can run, but you can you also can, pursue, uh, to get back to those areas, and, then you'll and you can evade a lot of like player aimed sail, weapons. Uh, some of the if they're chasing you, which also can happen. Some of our if, if I have learned activities. one thing in PvP, might be just to kind of, uh, speed is uh, of the essence. Grab. So you get what you can while you can while you can hold off the enemy, the reinforcements coming, and then you were always planning on running at some point. So that's definitely possible. As a follow-up question, if combat really doesn't go your way, what happens to your ship and crew when you're sunk? What happens to your cargo? So if you do it's the end. Happen to get the game sunk, is deinstalling. To everyone, uh, and you lose your ship. What happens is there's a wreck created where that happens, which okay. has a certain amount of your materials. Then you'll respawn basically either at one of the dens or at, a, at the nearest outpost, depending on what you choose. And most of your materials are, are mailed back to you. They're insured, so you can get them in the mail. Uh, if you choose to then go sail out to your wreck and no one has looted it, like another player, uh, then you will basically get all of your material. I wonder how many players can actually be on the servers. And you recraft your ship and you keep going. Like they have dedicated servers, so I assume is an online open world or open sea, uh, it will game. be more and than so Sea of Thieves. We will be coming across other players. And whether or not PvP can be uh, uh, an option is, is based on your choice. So did you are you on a PvP opt-in server? or not. So if you are, then you have to be kind of wary and make sure that you're not going to become the target of another pirate. But okay. at any point, if you feel like, you know, that's not for you or or you feel like there's maybe too many players that are engaging in PvP on the server on, you can just opt out immediately and go to a PvE only server and you don't lose any progress. There's oh, no so you can just take your ship to whatever server you, you want. A little further, you get a different ship, you upgrade some oh. weapons, and then you want to jump back into a, a PvP enabled server. Because there are benefits for playing and risking more on the PvP enabled server. Interesting. Okay, so you're also getting more stuff. Okay, this is the end of the video. I'm ready for combat. Thank you all for watching. Just try to that's interesting. So, like, it's kind of weird that we are watching a video about ship combat, customization, and progression gameplay. By the way, I feel like they haven't really talked about the progression at all in this video, <laughs> but that's just me. Um, but actually, the biggest like takeaway for me here is the PvP, right? Like, it seems like they are talking a lot about. PvP. So we have multiple servers for PvE and PvP, which is already cool. And you can take your ship with you, which is also really nice because that means you're not losing any progress and you always have your ship with you. As somebody who has been playing a lot of MMOs who are also focusing on PvP, this will be a mess though, for various reasons. First, whenever you were going on a PvP server, chances are very high 
that everyone will do PvP. Because if they don't want to, they just go on a PvE server and power themselves up. But Mo, haven't you listened to him? He just said you were getting more rewards when you were playing on the PvP server. Yeah, I have heard that and I don't trust it. Because what I've seen from other PvP games, whenever that was a thing, most of the time it was just safer to do PvE instead. Because you couldn't lose anything. Like, the reality is just that most NPCs don't... Like, if you are not an idiot and you you know what you are doing, for you to die in those games through, like, normal PvE activities is pretty low. So it is just much, much safer anyways to just hang around on a PvE server and then later on say, okay, I'm now really overpowered. I have the best in slot gear or I feel like I'm really, really good. Let's go to the PvP server and rough up the noobs or just like play against all the other players. Like as I said, PvP will be very, very high on the PvP server because of that. Yeah, like the time you're losing out on the PvP server will probably not be made up by the extra bonus you are getting from the rewards. I say this without knowing what the rewards will be. So I might be completely wrong. But this is what I have learned from other PvP games and other PvP focused games. That most of the time it wasn't worth the effort. Um, and well, if you need a Ubisoft example here, hello, The Division. As somebody who has multiple hundreds of hours in The Division games, The Dark Zone was never worth the extra loot. Especially not uh, later on when they made some changes. Like, it, it wasn't worth it. It so not was wor wasn't worth it. So maybe they have learned from it, but it's not the same developer as The Division. So I don't really, I, I, I believe it when I see it, right? And I would definitely check the PvP out of this game because it could be really, really fun. Um, I'm kind of curious to see how, like, this works in groups. Like, one of the, one of the main reasons... And I have never hide that feeling. But one of the main reasons why I didn't continue to play Sea of Thieves is because I had moments where I didn't want to participate in PvP at all. And the game was like, well, sucks to be you then. We will still force you to. That they're actually giving you that option where I just have like two hours of time and I just want to do some like merchant runs or whatever. Like this game could be exactly what I'm looking for. Because Sea of Thieves doesn't let me. Right. So maybe this is the game which could catch me. And yeah, like it, I have to see more. I really, really want to play it. Um, I have signed up for the, for the insider thing. Unfortunately, it is under NDA. Uh, we have to see. We we would definitely have some chance to to play it, and then I can stream it, yeah, at some point. But with that said, we are at the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. If you're new to the channel, you want to see more Skull and Bones videos because I'm I'm still kind of curious about this game. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel because there will be definitely more videos in the future. With that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next time. Stay safe. Till then.